there again. It's weather for Weather Geeks time. It's the midweek edition. Today is Wednesday, the 8th of January. And yeah, coming up a week from today, we'll be halfway through meteorological winter, believe it or not, which is, of course, December, January, and February. And January the 15th marks the halfway point of this season. Uh, so we'll talk about where we have been in the first half of the season coming up next week on Weather for Weather Geeks. And on this eighth day of the month, of course, January is supposed to be cold, right? But you know, a 13 degree below average day in January is really cold because we're getting to the time of the year over the next couple of weeks in which our average highs bottom out. The, the curve of our temperatures, our yearly temperatures bottoms out in terms of the averages over the next couple of weeks. Our 30 year average uh, reaches its nadir at uh, 33 degrees officially at the Youngstown Warren Airport here in the uh, middle of January. So today's a uh, high temperature of only about 20. That's about 13 degrees cooler than the average. That is impressive stuff uh, for the heart of the winter season. Now our nickel and dime week continues in terms of snow. Officially at the airport, another four tenths of an inch as of the issuance of the climate report today. That matched yesterday's total. We had 0.2 on Sunday. Now, of course, we got grazed by that uh, southern stream system on Monday, and officially 1.2 at the airport from that system. That brings our uh, January snow total up to 8.4. That's 3.6 inches above average for January. We're still running a little bit behind average for the season, officially at the airport. We talked about that last evening some. Go back and watch yesterday's video if you didn't uh, for a more detailed look at our local area and what communities are running ahead of average and what, are, what communities are behind average in terms of our snowfall so far this season, going back to when the, the flakes first started flying back in November. There's not many flakes flying locally this evening. By the way, uh, you may have noticed if you are a avid weather watcher, if you use some different apps, the uh, Cleveland National Weather Service radar is out of commission right now. It's uh, it's it's down for the time being, hopefully for not much longer. So we, we've had to use some alternate radar sources for northern Ohio. And yeah, those alternate radar sources are certainly picking up on a couple of lake effect streamers that have been more aimed out here out towards Mansfield and especially just north of Mansfield and all the way down towards Dover, New Philly, Strasburg in Tuscarawas County. That activity is missing us to the west and yeah, locally not much more than a flurry for the rest of the evening and the sky will clear out some tonight. But ahead of our big uh, winter storm getting set to impact millions of people, this next one coming down the pike is taking a more southerly track, so the winter storm watches I showed you last evening have been upgraded to winter storm warnings from Dallas to Memphis. Winter storm watch is extending over towards Atlanta. There'll be another chunk that is upgraded to a winter storm warning, no doubt, throughout uh, Tennessee, northern parts of Alabama and northern Georgia into the uh, mountains of the Carolinas. And yeah, there's going to be snow and, and sleet issues all the way down into uh, you know upstate South Carolina and all the way into Charlotte, North Carolina with this system as well. Otherwise, no doubt by now you've seen the devastation in Southern California, just a remarkable wildfire situation out here. You know, of course, they're no stranger to wildfires, unfortunately, in Southern California, but this event, the most significant in several years, and, you know, it's just heartbreaking seeing some of the, some of the footage of, you know, residential areas, business uh, districts, just gone. They're just incinerated. And so, yeah, fire weather warnings are still out for a good chunk of Southern California, except for the immediate, immediate coast. Um, the wind is going to try to diminish some tonight, but then it'll probably pick back up tomorrow. High wind warnings are still out for a lot of Southern California, and I, I suspect there'll be more spread of wildfires tomorrow as the wind picks back up. Back here at home, not much more than a straight flurry this evening. I do think the sky will clear enough tonight to allow temperatures to go low. I mean, we're talking about, you know, upper single digits, lower teens tomorrow morning, probably in a similar neighborhood Friday morning. But the good news is we'll at least see some sunshine on Thursday. Now it's pretty ineffective. The sun is low in the sky. It's not strong at this time of the year, of course. And so it's not going to do us a whole lot of good in terms of our temperatures, but a morale boost anyway with that sunshine on our Thursday. Friday will start with a mostly clear sky, but then clouds will increase in the timing of our snow. Uh, yeah, this looks a little faster than maybe uh, yesterday when we... Uh, when we talked about this storm. So I could see it starting to snow as early as, oh, just after sunset, maybe six o'clock or so Friday evening, seven, eight o'clock, it should be snowing almost everywhere. It's gonna snow most of the night, but with the faster speed of this, you know, it's gonna taper off before daybreak on Saturday. So maybe as early as about 5 a.m., the snow is already tapering off. So by the time we hit daybreak Saturday morning, close to 8 a.m., there's probably not much going on. Um, but at that point, uh, there will be accumulations throughout the area and enough to cause some Travel disruptions, although this is not going to be the big ticket item that it will be in northeastern Texas, southeastern Oklahoma, Arkansas, the Tennessee Valley, 
out into the Carolinas as well. Uh, you know, a couple of inches of snow in Atlanta or Charlotte is a really big deal. Around here, a couple of inches, you know, not as much of a big deal. And, you know, we're not expecting, you know, lofty numbers around here, but I do think that, uh, you know, it's nice to see our computer models in pretty good agreement here, and I think they have the right ideas. Uh, you know, our model here, our models uh, spread here, you know, between two and three inches, three and a half a possibility. I think we're going to fall somewhere in that range nearly everywhere. You know, this isn't lake effect, so this is a general snow in which everyone's kind of in the same boat. Expecting a large chunk of the area to be somewhere between two and four inches. I think four inches is about the ceiling. That's the most I could see anyone getting out of this because of the fast speed. It's going to thump, you know, for a couple of hours, maybe Friday night, but, you know, it's not going to snow hard for very long, and a lot of this will be pretty light in intensity, and it's going to snow for nine hours-ish on average. That should be good enough to give us a lot of us two and a half, three inches, maybe three and a half worth of snow. There's a one in five chance that you see less than two inches, but, you know, I'm pretty confident a lot of us are going to end up somewhere between two and four inches worth of snow. So again, the timing, uh, this will be critical for anyone who is working Friday evening, including yours truly. Um, the roads will certainly deteriorate as Friday evening goes on. I think the steadiest of the snow will be between about 7 p.m. and 4 or 5 a.m. Saturday morning. After that, not much happens Saturday morning. I think flurries will become a little more numerous by Saturday afternoon, but those will not be the kind of uh, you know snow showers and flurries that should be very problematic, more conversational than anything. The, the, the problems will really be from Friday evening through early Saturday morning. Now, temperatures will moderate ever so slightly uh, by early next week. Monday's high of 30. At least we're flirting with freezing. After that, another Arctic plunge for a few days. Fresh Arctic air means highs in the lower 20s for the middle of next week. Another rebound, perhaps even flirting with the freezing mark around the 18th. Uh, I do think that'll probably be, be followed by another shot of cold air around the 20th, 21st, 22nd. Um, so these little moderations in temperature will only last a, a day or two and only get us maybe up to about freezing. I, I think, you know, we probably don't see a day with highs a few degrees above freezing until sometime during the last week of the month. I do think that this pattern will start to relax some during the last week of January. And just real quickly before we leave you this evening, let's uh, start speculating a little on February. It's only January 8th, but hey, this is weather for weather geeks. This is the uh, composite map of the analog years I used to uh, update our winter forecast at the beginning of December. Um, when you stitch all these years together, you get a pretty mild map for the month of February, but not every year in this you know, analog set was mild. For example, February of 2014. Which, you know, that winter of 2013-2014 is bearing a lot of similarities to this winter, with one exception, the strength of La Nina. That was an Enso neutral winter, 13 into 14. We have La Nina, and a, you know, reasonably stout one, weak to weak moderate this year. And I think that La Nina strength will uh, become more and more important as uh, we go into the month of February. And I could see where uh, La Nina becomes more and more of a factor Let's see if I can bring up that February of 14. I didn't put it in there, but February of 14 was really, really cold. But an Enso neutral year, and this year with the La Nina, I, you know, a lot of the La Ninas end up looking like this in February. And that's where I'm going to, you know, place my bets right now. There are exceptions to the rule um, in, you know, some of these analogs, such as 2014. But uh, I do think that uh, La Nina will have the final say in the final month of meteorological winter. But boy, we've got a lot of winter to get through over the next uh, couple or maybe even few weeks before any sort of large scale pattern change. Thanks for watching on this Wednesday evening. I'll have uh, an update on uh, Friday night snow and much, much more on Thursday evening. Hope to see you then. In the meantime, have a great rest of your Wednesday night.